recording. Uh, okay, so uh, we're glad to welcome uh, everyone to the second part of uh, Louis Weber's talk uh, about uh, consciousness and artificial intelligence. And uh, today's talk topic is uh, Pathways to Artificial General Intelligence and Artificial Consciousness, first on ChatGPT. I will show the screen now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So you can start. Thank you, Anastasia, and hello, everyone. I'm happy uh, to see uh, several uh, people. So let me start yeah. with the presentation on uh, uh, artificial general intelligence, AGI, and the possibility to have uh, artificial consciousness. So the overview of my talk today is that, and maybe we can adjust the camera yeah. a little bit. Is this better? Please, please. And the microphone is also in the camera. Sorry? The microphone is also in the camera, but it's easier. Well, I will sit for a little part here. So the uh, summary is simply the following. I will give a brief review of what we discussed last week on consciousness and free will. Then I will present a few uh, papers um, which are in the field of artificial intelligence, more specifically in what we call automated scientific discovery. Uh, I will not have time to go into the field of cognitive neuroscience, unless maybe during the questions. And then I will try to make a, an analysis or a synthesis, if you like, and the general questions I will give some answers to or try to. Are the following is AGI possible? Can future AI systems be conscious? <clears throat> uh, I will also make a brief uh, intermezzo on ChatGPT. Okay, so this is actually the uh, result of the collaborations with several philosophers and also AI experts at the University of Cumann, where I uh, used to work. And uh, well, this is ongoing and the uh, um, article which I will use mostly for today's talk is the one here, um, is the second one. And of course, those people who are interested in reading it, I will be happy to uh, provide them with it. So last week, I presented a simple model on compatibilistic free will, uh, which is baptized the CMT model. Uh, and as you remember, um, it states that a free act is an act which is unconstrained and also which is conscious. And a conscious act uh, is <clears throat> an act that is monitored by some other mental activity in the brain. And monitoring can be understood as recorded, analyzed, controlled, or kept track of. This is a notion which I borrowed from Mahler and Bunge. Uh, the new element here is that Conscious monitoring, according to the CMT model, always involves or happens through beliefs, coherent sets of hypotheses, reasons, and in general, theories. Let us put a star on with theory to say that I uh, use this word theory in a pretty general sense. For instance, even in daily life, people, I believe, when they're conscious of something, they analyze things through a a coherent set of, of hypotheses. For instance, if a detective uh, is aware of something happening, actually he has a whole set of uh, hypotheses through which he looks at the situation. You could say that he has a little theory about uh, what, is, what is happening. Uh, so CMT stands for Conscious Through Monitoring Through Theories. Of course, this is a, a model that focuses on rational consciousness and free will, not on sentience. I will uh, say a word uh, about sentience in a moment. This is a compatibilist model because even if things would be perfectly determined, one still can be conscious of things through um, looking at them or reflecting on them. Uh, with you 
with, with, with uh, some hypothesis. Um, and I argued last week that it can solve problems of other compatibilist theories, such as those of Frankfurt, Wolf, Fischer, and Raviza, and I made the link with Kant's uh, view. So in a slogan, according to this model, as soon as an act is not purely triggered by reflexes, instinctive feelings, such as fears, one monitors, analyzes, or controls the act or the choice or decision using hypothesis, belief, reasons in a nutshell of theory. And from this point of view, the art of making the right free decisions is, it seems, using the most adequate beliefs or uh, theories. So according to this model, the central ingredient of consciousness or of rational consciousness at least, <clears throat> and in general, I would think of artificial general intelligence is theory-based thinking. Can we, <clears throat> in the literature on uh, artificial intelligence, can we find traces of this idea? In other words, can uh, we, uh, is there research done in artificial intelligence where people are uh, you know, trying to construct AI that, that can master uh, theories. That, that's what we uh, will we'll see in a moment. Uh, first, a few words on the definitions on the philosophy of consciousness. Uh, there are basically two schools, two views on what consciousness is. Uh, the first is so-called phenomenal or experiential or subjective consciousness and well-known philosophers in this school are Nagel and Chalmers. For instance, here is a famous quote by uh, Nagel. He says that in an article uh, we just saw what it is like to be a that, an organ has conscious mental states even only if there is something that it is like to be that organism, something it is like for the organism. Uh, I have to admit that I never uh, found this a very clear uh, definition. Uh, I do not fully understand it. I understand that uh, it means something like, uh, well, um, he is asking here how it feels like uh, to be a bat, how it feels like, for instance, a human consciousness is uh, materialized, if you like, by the feeling to be uh, Anastasia, Louis, or any one of us. We are conscious because we, we know what it is to, to be ourselves or to feel uh, like being ourselves. So this is a very important quote. And this I would call is, uh, you know, consciousness is a, the sentience part of consciousness, the capacity to feel. That's how I interpret it. Um, now, of course, if feelings would be the essence of consciousness, which, to be honest, I do not believe, but if it would be, then it would, of course, be very difficult to implement it using uh, artificial intelligence, because artificial intelligence is, is an algorithmic thing uh, before robots uh, will be able to feel a much bigger effort in uh, research need is needed. Okay? But, so that's why I belong broadly speaking, to the second school, which uh, <clears throat> is focusing what one could call cognitive consciousness. And here are people like David Rosenthal, uh, Daniel Dennis, Stanislas Dahane, and many more. As uh, Igor said last week, uh, the CMT model is an example of Rosenthal's higher order thought theory of consciousness. Uh, although I believe it also applies to free will. Of course, in consciousness, that's broadly the school to which this model belongs. Uh, I have a question. I've always been curious about this very famous phrase of Nagel. Uh, does, can it be translated in Russian? Does it make sense in Russian? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so according to the second school, consciousness is, is related to cognitive awareness, you might call it. Uh, and I'm conscious, according to this, uh, this school, I'm conscious of an act or a thought if I think about it, if I can more or less uh, understand it. 
c'est une soirée ou une soirée parce que vous euh, avez fait quelque chose euh, parce que vous avez donné une soirée de 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 soirée de
in some potential energy, for instance, electrical energy, or just a particle attached on a spring, or one that bounces as in a billiard table uh, on the walls. And what the artificial intelligence can do, it can understand which of these equations, uh, well, which, which uh, trajectory the particle is following and which, what is the law that governs uh, the trajectory of the particle. Of course, it's very important here to, to emphasize that uh, this can only be done if the uh, artificial neural net is intensively trained on uh, exactly similar uh, trajectories. So it has seen thousands of uh, trajectories belonging to exactly these four classes here. In other words, there has been a, a human physicist which has, who has trained the artificial uh, neural net to recognize uh, these uh, trajectories. Uh, so Wu and Tegmark, they claim in the article that they've taught to the artificial neural net to use different techniques that are used by uh, physicists and that philosophers of science know well. For instance, uh, to apply Occam's razor, which actually is a nice name for a very simple thing, which namely that the artificial neural net can simplify uh, the constants which the numbers it uh, receive. So it knows, for instance, that 0 0.0001 can be uh, can be uh, 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 equated with 0. Okay, At a certain, certain point, the difference can be neglected, which apparently is a very untrivial problem in uh, computer science. What it can also do is it can recognize that uh, certain particles are moving on very similar trajectories where the only difference between these trajectories is uh, the value of one parameter. Uh, for this, it can recognize that two particles are following uh, the Newton's second law in the special case of uh, gravitation, where uh, the, the parameter is uh, the mass of the particle or the gravitational constant. I don't remember which it is. I think it is the mass, actually. Uh, but that's, that's a detail. It could be both. Uh, in any case, so this is what uh, Tegmark calls unification, that, you know, the artificial neural net uh, can already unify uh, certain uh, trajectories and realize it, their parts, they're all described by the same uh, family of laws, which are parameterized by a parameter P. So this uh, artificial neural net learns to recognize a small number of physical environments, force laws, and to predict the evolution uh, of the system with high uh, precision. The results can be up to a million times more accurate than standard feed-forward neural networks. But what is important for this talk is that the ultimate goal of this program is the following. We hope that building on the ideas of this paper may one day enable AI to help us discover entirely novel physical theories from data. Cognitive neuroscience, uh, unfortunately, I will not have time, but uh, if people are interested, then maybe during uh, the, uh, the question time, we can, we can say something about it. Um, well, I'm, I was particularly interested in the Hannes work, uh, who is a very famous cognitive neuroscientist based in Paris, one of the most cited people in science, uh, he wrote an article on what is consciousness and could machines have it? And actually there's a very interesting link to make with the CMT model. Um, maybe just for Igor here, I could very quickly uh, say at least one word about it. Uh, the HANA discovered three levels of consciousness, C0, C1, and C2. C0 uh, corresponds according to them to the unconscious process in the human brain, C1 consciousness, they call it global availability, which is basically the availability of the data for further processing. And what they call real consciousness, that's C2 consciousness, that's self-monitoring, which is, according to them, reflexive, self-oriented. It refers to a self-referential relationship in which the cognitive system is able to monitor 
its own processing and obtain information about itself. That's all we'll say here. Maybe we can uh, come back to it uh, later. So now my analysis, a comparison between the CMT model and uh, these efforts in uh, automatic scientific uh, discovery. So according to the CMT model, rational consciousness is the capacity of an agent to monitor its acts or their mental or brain representations through cognitive frameworks or theories. Now, if you if we can trust these papers in artificial intelligence, uh, I would say that the uh, main uh, treasure, the growl of this type of advanced AI research uh, is constructing neural nets that can discover concepts, laws, and ultimately theories. So you see there is a link between uh, these two uh, perspectives. So uh, Tegmark and Wu, they um, explicitly state that they're after AI that can discover theories. Um, well, if ultimately uh, artificial neural nets would be able to do that, then according to the CMT, they would possess the key ingredient of rational uh, consciousness and uh, let us be generous, why not artificial general intelligence? So what I did in this uh, paper is to give a, a brief analysis uh, of how far they really are, a critical analysis, what is really uh, going on in this research, uh, in this AI research. Well, uh, a little reflection shows that both the monitoring of the CMT model and especially the theories are still uh, in their infancy. The monitoring in the, in the neural nets is initially obviously done by humans. They train the neural nets by feeding them with batches of examples and by indicating which outcomes are successful. So uh, the AI needs to be trained for each physical context defined by a specific law. It can not recognize, of course, situations or context that it has not been trained on. Well, that's, that's a, a limitation of almost all uh, artificial neural nets. So that's maybe not the key point. The key point is that the theories that these uh, artificial neural nets can master uh, for the time being are extremely narrow in scope. They're actually, according to uh, philosophers of science uh, vocabulary, not theories, but specific laws. Uh, you could call them irregularities or tendencies. Uh, Tegmark speaks about, you know, having made a theory hub in which uh, the, these four different laws that I show you are stored and that can be recognized and used by the A and N, but that's still uh, th that's not a, a true theory, right? These are specific laws. Uh, in other words, the theories are still super simple. They are actually laws. For instance, the law of gravitation. Uh, neural nets are very far from recognizing, let alone reconstructing, for instance, the whole theory of Newtonian mechanics, which is one more level in, ex in abstraction above. Uh, so we are still far from the level of, of abstraction of which the human mind is capable for the time being. Uh, you could phrase it differently and say that the neural net is specialized on a tiny part of all data that an agent, human or robot, can encounter in the real world. Uh, in particular, these neural nets, and I believe I did not find more advanced ones in the literature, though they're advanced in their category, but I specialize on physical data, not on arbitrary data, data from daily life, from data describing psychological or sociological context, which are often incomparably more complex. So here's an interesting research question for further research. Are there theories, coherent sets of hypotheses at least, for such a daily context? Can we co-define them? I, I found that a very interesting uh, line of research. Um, so let's continue the critical analysis back to the monitoring. So it consists here essentially of recognizing the context. Yes, the uh, artificial neural net can, in a certain sense, monitor uh, the data it receives. Namely, it can recognize uh, some context out of a very limited uh, number of contexts, namely which law out of a limited set of laws, and it can then predict 
uh, the future evolution of the observed physical system. Now, advanced monitoring of an act uh, involves not only recognizing data and predicting future behavior of the observed system, but also goal-oriented, purposeful uh, use, application, or implementation of the information obtained. So we can rephrase this by saying that uh, computers or robots emulating or mimicking consciousness should uh, have to learn or to master so axiological theories, namely theories about what are good goals uh, to to pursue. Okay, but we can we can still you know this goal oriented behavior can actually uh, be uh, seen as a, a special case of theory based uh, reasoning. Same thing uh, if you uh, if one wants to build AI that has social skills. Uh, then it will have, according to if the CMT model uh, can be believed, then it will have to master social theories and ethical robots will have to master ethical theories. So this leads to the uh, conclusion that uh, human-like artificial neural nets uh, will have to uh, be able to master what we called in this article coherent webs of theories. And a rather straightforward assumption is that if they can be uh, realized, it would be via interconnected nets of artificial neural nets. Uh, the, just for those interested, uh, there, is, there is a literature in cognitive neuroscience which uh, is coming to a very close um, is coming to a very close uh, uh, conclusion, which uh, that's a group of uh, Tannenbaum in MIT, where they say that, well, it's a little bit small to read here, that uh, rather than merely solving pattern recognition problems, AI should uh, ground learning in intuitive theories of all different spheres, right? Uh, psychology, sociology, physics, and so on and so forth. So there is uh, supporting literature. Uh, maybe for Igor, since I still have about 15 minutes, um, the link with, with um, the Hahn is the following, that, uh, well, there are points of overlap with his view on, um, on consciousness. Uh, we disagree to some extent when the Hahn and uh, collaborators claim that the highest form of consciousness, which they call C2, uh, is reflexive self-oriented. Okay? They call this highest form of uh, self-monitoring. Self uh, well, I believe that any form of conscious monitoring uh, involves uh, hypotheses and theories, and that the theories one uses to monitor oneself are not fundamentally different than those one, one used to monitor other people. So that's a, that's a small difference. I didn't really uh, see what's the... Uh, what's the difference between, for instance, uh, self-monitoring and monitoring through uh, through theories? But that's that's of course an easy thing to say. And much more research, we need to found this on more solid uh, evidence. A brief intermezzo before I conclude is uh, while we were doing this research, there is a, a new kit on the block arrived, namely ChatGPT, that you all know. Uh, and of course, uh, an interesting question is, how far is ChatGPT in mastering theory-based thinking? In other words, how intelligent is it really? Uh, I would rephrase this in how good is it a general problem solving? And here again, I take as a benchmark uh, scientific problem solving, uh, where I think that many philosophers of science can agree, uh, at least in, in physics, uh, it's clear how questions are answered and problem solved, namely by applying the relevant theory to the question or problem at hand. Um, recall how we all solve uh, physical problems, simple or more complex. We were thinking, well, what was the theory or the model or the set of hypotheses, the laws to apply to this problem? And then once we have identified these laws, we try to deductively apply or derive the correct answer from 
uh, these laws together with the particular instance of the problem uh, given to us. Uh, Theory-based thinking, it can be reformulated, I believe, as uh, hypothetical deductive reasoning, because physical or scientific explanation involves two essential steps, uh, namely, first, hypothesizing that a certain theory applies to a certain problem. I just gave you a little example. And then deducing that the answer logically follows from this theory. It is from this collection of laws, or if you prefer, uh, hypotheses. So uh, another name for theory-based thinking is hypothetic deductive reasoning, which I believe is the hallmark of any scientific problem uh, solving. Let us assume this for the time being, at least if you're not convinced, then we can at least, we can see if ChatGPT, how far it goes uh, in hypothetic deductive reasoning, uh, at least we can maybe develop a small uh, test for testing its skills of hypothetic deductive reasoning. That's what, what we did in uh, this part of the research. Um, First, actually, we, we tested the skills of causal reasoning. Uh, in a certain sense, sense, causal thinking is a simplified form of hypothetic deductive reasoning. Uh, simply, well, uh, actually, it needs, I believe, it needs hypothetic deductive reasoning. In order to identify causes, one needs a theory of what causes what. For instance, a detective. Uh, if he wants to identify the causes of uh, the murder, if he wants to have uh, an adequate cause, if he wants to, to have a good idea who the culprit is, well, he should have a, a whole uh, theory, a whole set of hypotheses of the mechanism, the motives, and so on, which are behind uh, the murder. So from this theory, uh, he deduces who is uh, the culprit, who is the cause. Same if you want to identify the cause of uh, the Earth rotating around the sun. Let's say that the cause is the gravitational force. Well, in order to come to this conclusion, we simply need the theory of uh, Newton. In other words, no adequate uh, identification of causes without some uh, knowledge of, of some theory, of a relevant theory. So cause is a pre-scientific notion, but causal thinking is vital for everyday thinking, and humans are very good at it. Uh, there are many papers in psychology, cognitive science, which show that even uh, babies, even young children, begin to be uh, efficient in causal reasoning. So what we did was the following. There, is, there are books on uh, causal reasoning. And they often use diagrams. For instance, you see here a diagram where uh, five neurons are interacting. The uh, gray neurons are on and the white neurons are off. So neuron C is on. Uh, the arrow means that if neuron C is on, it causes neuron D to fire, so to be on, uh, which then causes neuron E uh, to fire. Uh, there is one arrow from C to D, which is an inhibiting arrow, so which says that uh, any signal, uh, well, B cannot cannot uh, fire if C is on. If C is on, B is necessarily off, even if it gets a stimulating input from A. So when one sees a diagram like this, if you look at it uh, for, for a little time, people usually know it's one then asks, what is the cause of the neuron E firing? For instance, uh, well, there are actually uh, three times here. C and A fire at the first time, T1, D, and B at T2, and E uh, fires at T3. So the question is, what is the cause of neuron E firing at T3? I think it's very obvious to see that at time T2, the cause is D. But what is the cause of uh, what is the cause of neuron E firing at uh, time T1? What is, the, what is the cause, what do you think is the cause at T1 of the neuron E firing at T3? Is it, could it be 
are is are the cause of the firing of E. No, because I is blocked by, by C, so the cause is, is C. So with a little uh, actually training, one, one, one can master these diagrams very quickly. Uh, and so what we did was to transcribe these diagrams uh, in words, okay, uh, which is easy. This, this reads here, uh, if C would occur at T1, D would occur at T2, if D would occur at T2, E would occur at T3, if I would occur to you, and so on and so forth. You can describe this in words, and then you can submit to uh, this info to ChatGPT and ask, does E occur at T3? What is or what are the causes of E occurring or not occurring? And we, we did this with a whole series of diagrams, which you can find in literature, or you can construct them uh, easily yourself. And so in June uh, 2023, uh, ChatGPT only answered one of these 30 diagrams we submitted correctly. It always gave the wrong answer. Uh, very funny, ChatGPT one month or two months later almost gave uh, the correct answer to all of the questions. Very, very, very amazing. To the point that we were thinking, well, maybe it's because of our tests. That's, of course, a big assumption. Uh, so this is a, a preliminary result. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about today, actually. Today, uh, more interesting is, so the capacities of ChatGPT uh, to do hypothetic deductive thinking. Uh, we made a, a whole list of questions here in, in, in the field of physics. Uh, we asked what is the correct answer. Uh, and very often ChatGPT gives the correct answer. So here, uh, the question to the left is, um, you can read it, hopefully there, suppose an electric circuit contains three elements connected in series, a lamp, a resistance, R, and a voltage source, suppose R is, and so on and so forth. So this is an example where ChatGPT4 uh, immediately gives the correct answer, but that's not that interesting. The interesting part comes after uh, giving the answer, we ask the second question, which is, can you list all the hypotheses you used to uh, derive the correct answer? Can you list all the laws which are needed to deduce the correct answer? This is typically what one would do if uh, a professor has a student and wants to know whether the student uh, is giving the correct answer by chance or by reading. And here, uh, the, the result was much more mitigated. So you can see that uh, well, it, you can pretty easily prompt it to list all the hypotheses which are at the basis of its answer. But here, if the context is a little bit complicated, uh, it gives either irrelevant or wrong hypothesis. Okay. Uh, well, I have to admit that uh, it still is very impressive. Let us face it. Uh, this simple test of hypothesis listing, uh, for simple questions, it is easily passed by, uh, by ChatGPT4. Okay? Uh, you have already to use some uh, creativity um, to, to, to induce it into error. But what, what is important here is that we believe that, or I believe that listing all hypotheses used to answer a question is the minimal test for hypothetical deductive or theory-based uh, read. And so my conclusion is that ChatGPT already mimics uh, hypothetic deductive reasoning quite impressively in many contexts, but in somewhat complex contexts, it is not capable of listing the correct hypothesis or laws needed to explain answers. In complex contexts, it is not capable of showing understanding, in other words, or hypothetic deductive reasoning. So we have published this in a paper together with uh, Anastasia Ugleva. And if people are interested, we are interested in continuing this research. Let us then come to the conclusion. So according to the CMT model, a key ingredient of natural or artificial consciousness, perhaps even artificial general intelligence, is the capacity to master coherent webs of theories. 
or you can call this theory-based reasoning, advanced research in AI looks for automated theory discovery and application mastering of theories for trajectory prediction. So these new computational tools would in the future, put in the future, open the door according to this CMT model uh, to AGI and why not artificial consciousness and even ethical robots. But the road is very ambitious because for the time being theory mastery in artificial neural net is uh, in the beginning phase. Uh, at the moment, no one really knows how to formally describe the synthesis of loss into theory. So in other words, there is no theory for theory building. But at the same time, ChatGPT mimics theory-based thinking to some degree already. One may be impressed. Uh, still, I believe it is not yet an AGI for the reasons explained. A lot of potential here for uh, interdisciplinary work. Um, for instance, formalizing uh, theory-based thinking in, in, in certain contexts. There are big ethical challenges which are interesting to study. Um, there is an interface with neuroscience, of course, to explore. So there is a lot of work for many philosophers. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, and now we will uh, turn to our opponent, Igor Felicevich Mikhailov. I will uh, share the screen. Mm -hmm. Are the slides changing? No. Okay. Um, I I don't uh -huh. okay. So I think again, oh, to all of you, to, to really particularly to invite me to, to go on <laughs> this discussion. <clears throat> we are a bit limited in time. I will uh, make my talk all together now without uh, just flawless, and then we will have a little. Uh, Discussion, maybe. Um, uh, well, I uh, was preparing uh, for this talk based on Louis' article, which was cited above. And well, so I missed this part uh, about GPT, so maybe we'll, uh, we'll have the discussion in a place. But, and that's what I want to say. Louis, in his uh, article on artificial consciousness, on the possibility of uh, artificial consciousness, starts with. Uh, a paper by Stanislav Dian uh, with co-authors, and Stanislav Dian is a well-known and esteemed researcher, he's a, a neurobiologist. And it is very interesting that he started in late 1990s with the study of um, neural correlates of mathematical notions. And his book was called, in French as I remember, La Bosse des Maths which well, uh, somehow it was translated in English as a sense of, of the mouth, but it seemed to be not very correct because la bosse is a kind of the gland. So I see uh, an allusion to Descartes in uh, in the title of his book. But nevertheless, um, this is a very interesting um, paper that Louis uh, refers to. And uh, Louis outlines um, a piece of this paper that sounds like this. Uh, see one consciousness, the, uh, the consciousness that is connected to, con to control, not to self-control, but uh, 
um, to intentionality, to uh, to the consciousness as a transitive, uh, uh, to be conscious of something. Uh, the C consciousness corresponds to the transitive meaning of consciousness as in the driverless consciousness of the light. It refers to the relationship between a cognitive system and the specific object of thought, such as mental representation of the field term light. Uh, this object appears to be selected for further processing, including verbal and nonverbal report information that is, uh, uh, that is conscious in this sense, becomes globally available uh, to the organism. For example, we can recall it, act upon it, and speak about it. Uh, Stanislav Dian is, famously, uh, is a famous supporter of the global workspace theory. Uh, Louis comments like this. In short, uh, C1 consciousness is the brain capacity to keep, to keep information stored and available for further processing or computation, as, as is the standard term in cognitive neuroscience. My comment is, this interpretation fails, as uh, the same may be said of information stores and uh, stored and processed unconsciously. Consciousness presupposes some categorical particularity missed here. I remember suddenly that uh, in 19, oh, sorry, in 2020, there was a, an interesting paper by a group of authors that was called uh, Hot Criteria uh, for the Empirical Series of Consciousness. Uh, the first author was Dirk. And um, uh, the first uh, crit criterion that a criterion that they formulated was that uh, an empirical theory of consciousness must be paradigmatic. And by being paradigmatic, they meant that uh, it must be a theory of it must be a theory of particularly consciousness, not by not of cognitive capabilities in general, not by, uh, not of thought or mind or whatever. It uh, this theory must uh, be. Uh, uh, in a position to tell the consciousness from every other uh, cognitive capacity. Consciousness. Sorry? That's what they call speed truth. So it's not the real consciousness according to the Han as our big speed truth consciousness, which then we can have uh, self monitor. No, 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 no. I, uh, what those uh, this group of uh, authors meant is that any uh, empirical theory of consciousness must be capable to uh, distinguish the case of consciousness from the case of unconscious uh, cognitive uh, processing, from thought, from from whatever else. Well, I'm very sorry. Maybe I will, uh, I will go on and then we'll, we'll discuss every every single point. Otherwise, we, it will be an, an infinite discussion. Yes. Then, <clears throat> uh, Louis uh, outlines uh, second part, uh, another part in this article, another piece of this article, C2, about the C2, or self-monitoring refers to a self-referential relationship in which, in which the cognitive system is able to monitor its own processing and obtain information about itself. This sense of consciousness corresponds to what is commonly called introspection, or what uh, psychologists call metacognition, the ability to conceive and make use of uh, internal representations of one's own knowledge and abilities. Uh, and uh, in uh, Louis' own words, C1 can happen or without C2 and vice versa. This is your interpretation of what uh, uh, Stanislav Dian uh, wants to say as far as I can understand. Well, my proposition is that uh, the uh, relation between C1 and C2 might be understood a little bit more complicated as a little bit more complicated. I would propose that one fundamental, what is fundamental, is C1, which presupposes unconscious representation of self-presence. In all the cases of C1, there must be unconscious representation of uh, the presence of the cognitive system itself. The latter being C1, if I may say so, at times, thus producing uh, C2. So the cases of C2 is those cases when the presence of the cognitive self, um, system itself in the particular situation is C1, uh, is, uh, uh, is brought to the consciousness. And uh, in, the, in those cases, we will have the, uh, the paradigm, uh, paradigmatic cases of the so-called C2. And what is interesting in in this article is this 
um, sentences, the statement, Bayesian inference and evidence accumulation, which are cornerstone computations for AI, are basic unconscious mechanisms for humans. My proposition is uh, that uh, there is no um, uh, there is no reason to suppose that conscious mechanisms should be any different. If unconscious mechanisms are cases of Bayesian inference, then conscious uh, mechanisms may be as well. I'm not saying that they uh, necessarily are, but they may be. Then, uh, Dean uh, states that self-monitoring machine would keep a list of uh, its sub-programs, compute estimates of their probabilities, of succeeding at various tasks and constant, constantly update them, for example, noticing when a part fails. Most present-day uh, machine learning systems are devoid of any self-monitoring. They compute in the sense of C0 without representing uh, the extent and limits of their knowledge or the fact that others may have a different viewpoint uh, than their own. And Louis said, it seems that the key recommendation that the author has addressed to their colleagues from AI is to include the artificial neural networks at a higher level in artificial neural networks, a higher level architecture for self-monitoring, including a database of their own cap capacities and limits. But my question is, in this case, if this final architecture should be connectionist, uh, in other words, self-learning, or hybrid, so-called hybrid, partly programmed or symbolic, uh, some authors proposed, I, I've just recently met uh, or came across uh, with a um, collective article that, says, uh, that said that uh, we can't uh, reach uh, the stage of uh, AGI uh, unless we, we are able uh, to build uh, the hybrid systems, uh, unless we are able to uh, to supplement the cognitive neural network, uh, the connections neural networks uh, with the symbolic mechanisms of theory, uh, a kind of rational theory processing. And uh, Louis says, of course, hybrid uh, approaches are possible, which is uh, which highlights uh, the problem very much. In my view, hybrid implies mimicking, not implementing a, a C. I suspect that. Uh, such systems may, uh, just as chat GPT or GPT systems in general, uh, they are mimicking human uh, language capacities, but uh, in fact, they are just uh, large uh, language model, uh, models implementing uh, uh, probabilistic algorithms. Um, CMT, uh, State, uh, stands for conscious through monitoring through theories. Theories, uh, theories asterisk. asterisk. Uh, theories asterisk do not have to meet the rigor methodological claims to theories proper. To monitor is construed, uh, this is the uh, Lewis words, to monitor is construed as to record, analyze, control, and keep track of. According to the CMT model, conscious, uh, conscious choices should be monitored through theories. But, I say, for this model to be explanatory, none of the consti uh, constituting parts of monitoring must be conscious. Otherwise, we would have a uh, circulus in probando, uh, that is circle in the explanation. So is monitoring itself conscious? Or we can record, analyze, control, or keep track of consciously. Um, as Louis says, within the, C uh, within the CMT theory, the conclusion is straightforward. Advanced AI system uh, systems will have to acquire and learn to apply, that is, master theories. In the phrasing of the CMT model, human agents have goals and use physical, sociological, psychological, axiological, including ethical, etc. theories, theories about their actions and the given environments. Uh, their actions and environment are screened through the lens of wide variety of theories. In my view, the problem is that identification of theories asterisks and relevant procedures of cognitive monitoring uh, they are with. Um, if they are not uh, that rigidly structured and described as paradigmatic deductive theories, then what can we count as an event of monitoring? A working method should include proving that 
first, a behaving subject really holds those, those three asterisks and is not just interpreted as holding them. And second, if not uh, for some of those serious asterisks, he or she would have behaved otherwise. The first is a matter of attribution, while the second is a matter of falsifi falsifiability of CMT model in general. Both seem to be issues for CMT model. Uh, in Louis' words, human-like free acts also monitored through or guided by goals and purposes. Mm, rational human agents know their goals. Uh, my question is, do they know the goals unconsciously? Otherwise, we have a circle in the explanation again. To know is not just to be trained. If knowledge is a justified true belief, as is widely discussed and accepted by many philosophers, can we ascribe truth values, not just determine high values of probability, but truth values unconsciously? To do so, we must first master language with truth value semantics, and second, have an Urteilskraft in Kant's words, uh, as in ascribing those values. A claim that all these may be done unconsciously is rather counterintuitive, which does not imply that it is false, of course. Uh, in Louis' words, you, uh, in one specific free act, a whole web of, web of theories, this is the term that goes all through the article, uh, web of theories, asterisks, physical, sociological, psychological, axiological, etc., is usually involved, and this web, this web needs to form a coherent whole. My question is, if any of these theories, asterisks, are unconscious, then the whole CMT model is not that of consciousness, is not explanatory. Web is certainly a metaphor, but of what? If it alludes to World Wide Web, then it is just a system of cross-references, but that does not secure coherence in any sense, not to mention consistency. Uh, another quotation from Lee. Uh, the most basic and important convergence lies in the fact that both frameworks come to the conclusion that consciousness in essence is a matter of rationality of thinking or of computation in neuroscientific terms. I say that even if each instance of rational thinking is computation, as Hobbes famously uh, stated in Levy of uh, not all computations are cases of thinking. CMT itself is a case of rationalization of consciousness, which is predictable, uh, predictably taking into consideration its theoretical uh, flavor. Another quotation, our model fits well with interpretation by Dean and co-authors that most, most or all of the tasks uh, that state-of-the-art state artificial intelligence um, can perform are still of uh, an unconscious as zero type uh, that is correspond to what human, humans do unconsciously. This agrees with the CMT model. The computations uh, performed by the deep uh, artificial neural networks in section uh, three are not monitored through serious asterisks and certainly not by comprehensive set of high grade theories as argued in the previous section. If those computations were monitored, I say, by high grade theories proper, it would not make them conscious. What would monitoring by theories, do, why would monitoring by theories asterisks do so? And, uh, and, and, and so if I'm, uh, if I have five minutes, five minutes left, then um, I think that uh, all my uh, remaining critique is a kind of, uh, of, of the same vein. So uh, I will, yes, I will uh, send, of course, this presentation to Louis for him to be um to be conscious <laughs> of my critique and uh i will yes uh i have even minor remarks uh along the along the text my points of agreement for this model is first cognitive science has important parallels with philosophy of science this is obvious uh, if we compare for instance uh, Popper's um hypothetic de deductive model with the uh, present day questionable theory of predictive processing, well, they are very, mm, uh, uh, very, how do you say this, isomorphic. 
isomorphic in a sense. And the second, there are no well ground obstacles to artificial conscious, uh, consciousness, which I uh, absolutely agree with. But my objections are the whole conception of uh, CMT model implies at least three ungrounded assumptions, in my view. First is principal properties of theories estimates are the same as those of theories. And Louis's uh, logic uh, that starts from the cases of uh, artificial neural networks uh, trained to find uh, or to, uh, to construct some physical theories and uh, using this as an argument uh, in favor of CMT models shows that uh, there is no um, particular difference or is no substantial difference of theories asterisk and theories prop. The first uh, ungrounded assumption, in my view, is that principal pro uh, properties of computation are the same as those of thought. Uh, in several places of the article, thought is uh, identify it with computation and vice versa. And um, the third point is that machines are intrinsically rational. There are places in the article where uh, Louis says that, uh, well, this uh, methodology is rational, so it may be, um, may be implemented in machines. And uh, that's all I should uh, commend or that if I'm presented with a choice, either I will uh, prefer the uh, uh, CMT model or I uh, am to go on with the predictive processing theory, which I'm uh, sympathetic to uh, at the time. I would uh, prefer the second because uh, the predictive processing theory uh, doesn't, uh, according to the Occam's razor, doesn't presuppose a spare uh, uh, essences or spare um, spare things <laughs> like theories, like monitoring and uh, what else? It speak. It says only about uh, probabilistic uh, generated models, which are uh, just distributions of probability implanted implanted in our cognitive systems that generate some predictions. Uh, concerning our uh, perceptive input. And when we receive the actual perceptive input, our cognitive systems, system just computes the difference between the uh, prediction and uh, the actual data. Uh, it informs the, um, uh, the gene generated model about this difference. Uh, and the, general, uh, the generated model is updated according to uh, to the obtained uh, perceptive data just to minimize the so-called free energy, the uh, norm of this difference between the prediction and the actual data uh, data um, received. Uh, I think that this theory is simpler. It is more mathematized. It, it is more computational in the sense. And uh, in, as it is, uh, formulated initially, it doesn't uh, comply to the first uh, criteria of uh, the um, the empirical uh, theories of consciousness. But uh, I think it was nine, it was uh, twenty nineteen when Carl Friesen wrote an article called "Am I Self-Conscious," in which he proposed a, a particular theory of consciousness based on the predictive uh, processing methodology. And uh, well, this uh, theory is quite interesting. We don't have time to, mm, to <laughs> even don't have time to present it and uh, to discuss it, but maybe uh, we'll have some next case to, to talk about. So I think that there, uh, in general, that there are uh, more efficient candidates for this uh, empirical theory of consciousness on the market. And then the proposed uh, very interesting um, CMT. Thank you.